Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Solo Stove Bonfire Fire Pit. This is the kind of Goldilocks happy medium of fire pits that is offered by Solo Stove. This is going to be your most portable fire pit. So for those of you like myself who don't necessarily have a place where you can keep a fire pit out year round, this is gonna be the perfect size for you because well, you can pack it up in the included carrying case, which I'll show you a little later, and store it for the winter time or when not in use. They do have two other models which are slightly smaller and much larger, but one, the smaller one, that's made to bring camping with you, and the large one is definitely made to be kept in place. When we're talking about the actual size of the bonfire here, you are looking at a diameter of 19.5 inches, so just shy of 20 inches, with a height of 14 inches without the stand, because this is just the bonfire right here, and has a weight of 20 pounds. So with that weight and size, it is actually fairly portable for what you're getting here. The bonfire itself is made of 304 stainless steel, but you can see after a season of using this, it's got a nice patina to it. Meaning down here, where you can see this is kind of the original color that the solo stove was, versus up here where the metal's gotten heated over time. So let's actually take a look at what this looked like right out of the box in its pristine condition so that we can compare. This is just a quick out of the box look of the solo bonfire uh, before it actually gets used, because I wanted to have a difference between pristine and then actually how it looks after it gets used. Uh, so just a quick look around so you get an idea of what this looks like. You can see right here, this is where the two pieces of metal come together. So you will have a noticeable line. It's not terrible. You have some perforation for airflow at the bottom. Nope, this is not going to be used on this table. And if you were going to use this on a deck, there actually is a separate stand that you would need to raise this up. If not, it's very close to the ground and you have a possibility of things getting overly hot. All right, we're gonna come up here to the top because we do have this gate right here and it ships where the gate is upside down, so you just kind of take and flip that. We're gonna take that out for a moment. You can see your perforated air holes at the top there. And then down in here, you actually have the grate where your logs will rest. And underneath that is actually an ash bin, which you can't really see here, but because your ash is going directly through your grate to an ash bin down there, there's no drop for the ash bin, that ash kind of sits there. So you remove it by turning the bonfire here upside down. So keep that in mind as you don't want to get water in here because then your ash is going to turn to goop and might not leave easily since there's no drop underneath. And I'm going to pick this up one more time very quickly because over here you can see the seam on that side up at the top. And this is just like I said, a quick look at it. So coloration, how it was before. Now, besides the patinaing that you see here versus when I originally opened it and took it out of the box, interior also does get a little, I'm not gonna say must, but it's a fire pit. It's getting heated, it's getting scratched because you're throwing wood and logs and twigs and all that stuff in here. So it's not terrible. But again, a lot of the reviews that I saw didn't really show the interior or really the exterior after heavy amounts of use. Again, this is after one season, picked it up last year, probably did a burn, two, three times a month uh, for like four months and I've gotten two burns out of it this season already. So that's what we're looking at for usage wise. Now, one of the interesting factors of the solo stove is the fact that, well, it's a double wall construction, meaning these things down here bring air up inside and then there's perforated holes all around the rim here, which allow for a better burn of what you have in here. But that also means that if you're used to doing fires outside, this will actually burn through your fuel much faster because of that extra burn. That extra burn that happens also is why they say it is smokeless. Uh, and I'm gonna say smokeless with an asterisk because well, one, you have to be at a certain height of fuel in here and not too high, not too low in order for that secondary burn to happen and keep the smoke down. The times that you're gonna really notice 
heavy smoke or more smoke than you normally would with this R1 when you're first lighting it. And two, if you happen to try and use Duralogs with it, because I did test a Duralog, a singular Duralog in here to see if it actually would work in this system, and it does. However, you do get a bit of a heavy smoke as seen here. And primarily that's because, well, there's one log and it's really meant to be stacked up a little higher. So it does come out a little blacker. If you've never actually used a fire pit before or not or are not as comfortable setting up a fire i'm going to tell you this is remarkably simple to actually get going so let's actually take a quick look at what a initial kindling setup looks like that i used and how quickly that goes up just showing how little is actually needed to get this thing started just some random kindling twigs pieces of pallet scraps newspapers and then down in there somewhere right there is actually some fire starter, which is just paraffin with some sawdust. Once you get your kindling situated and your fire actually going, you may be wondering, again, if you're new to this, what kind of fuel can I use? Well, here you go. This is a hardwood. If you cut these yourself or pick them up from an arborist or you can go to your local grocery store, you're looking to be using anything that is a 12, 10 to 12 inch long with a three to six circumference that will fit comfortably in the solo stove. And once you really get this going, then you'll start to see that really nice burn, but you'll also have a nice flame shooting directly up because of the fire ring that's on top. However, because of the way that this is constructed, heat is not dissipated evenly around this. While these sidewalls will get very hot and you should not touch them, as can see, as can be seen here, the majority of the heat dissipation is actually up out the top. So if you're trying to use this for warmth, uh, Solo Stove does now send sell a heat dissipator. But if you're just getting this, just know sitting next to this, you might not get as much heat as if you're standing upright. So keep that in mind. One of the really cool features that is touted by Solo Stove for something like this is that secondary pilot burn that you get where it kind of helps keep the smoke down. I'm gonna say that is one of the coolest features of this and everybody who I've had around this always comments on it once that really gets going, how cool that really looks. When all is said and done and you're ready to stop using your fire pit, there's one thing that you have to keep in mind. You cannot dump water on this. One, it's stainless steel. It will warp if you hit it with cold water. But two, the ash catch that's at the bottom of this, if you hit that with water, that ash is gonna turn to sludge. And there, there's no door on the bottom of this that you can open up to let the ash sludge out. And the holes are not gonna exactly let ash out. So you have to plan your burns accordingly so that you, not, you don't have to leave this unattended. There are some extra accessories that you can get to help but we'll talk about that a little later because the next question is if you're not dumping water on this and you actually do let this cool generally overnight how do you get the ash out what does that look like well it looks like this Now, some things that I have noticed not being really covered and partially why in this entire review, I haven't been really moving this around uh, because the oil from your hands on stainless steel, when it heats up, if I bring over and I have my glove on for this because, well, you can see where I touched this with my hand and got oil on it, it kind of burns in. So I, I generally uh, use the solo stove with gloves when it's cool 
to move things around. But just giving you an idea of what actual like wear and tear would look like on the fire ring that goes around the top here. Now for storage, I will say that the fire ring just flips over and makes a nice place for itself inside of the solo stove that you can use the included carrying case with. Here we have the included carrying case with the solo stove. It does come with nice handles on both sides that you can grip to help carry this around. It is a very thick material and kind of reinforced at the bottom. It does have a drawstring at the top. So when you get your solo stove in here, you can kind of seal things up and port it around or store it as I talked about before. However, there are two other accessories that I would recommend getting if you're getting your solo stove bonfire. And let's take a look at what those are. First being the actual solo stove stand for the bonfire. It adds an extra just shy of three inches. And if you're going to be using this on a deck of any kind or on your grass, you need this to separate the bottom here from whatever surface it's on. Now, I will admit, I kind of thought that it came with this, but it does not, even though all the depictions you may see online have the stand depicted with the solo stove. These are two separate products. I kind of wish that they put them together because it's really nice to be able to have this. Now the question is, can you actually use this on a wood or a Trex deck and not have to worry about it burning? Well, I had those questions. So last time I used this, I threw a small piece of Trex and a small piece of wood under this before burning to see if it would do anything. So let's take a look at that. Test of Trex and regular deck wood underneath the solo stove with the ring to help lift things up. We'll see how these look afterwards. Ash pile after last burn was kind of windy, so there's a bit more left, but it does really do a good job of breaking things down. Despite the high temperatures that we saw, both the regular piece of decking and the treks are absolutely fine as long as you use the ring to help lift things up. So that's good to know. As you saw there with the use of the stand, you actually don't have to worry about hurting your deck, which is nice. And partially why I said I wish it came with the solo stove came with that is because if we flip this over, you can actually see there is a little groove that the stand can sit on. So they did kind of figure that you'll be purchasing that. Once it's all grooved into place, this is what it looks like with the stand option and probably how you've seen it advertised. The stand is actually one of the first accessories that I got because I wanted to be able to use this on my grass without having to worry about putting pavers down, but also know that you can use this on the deck as long as you have enough space around the solo stove itself. Now, the second accessory that I think is a must have for the solo stove is the solo stove lid for the bonfire. It sits nicely over the top, and part of the reason that I say this is the secondary, what I would consider must have for the solo stove bonfire, is one, if you let this get down to just about burning embers or burning coals, you can put the lid on and let that quelch out overnight without having to worry about wildlife wandering over and messing with the stove and having those hot exposed embers. Now, the other reason I say the solo stove lid here is a, another must-have accessory is because when you pack everything up into the bag, because it only has a drawstring to keep things shut, that means that insects, spiders, things of that nature might be able to wander their way into the solo stove itself. But if you have the lid on the top, you don't have to worry about that because everything packs up neatly into the solo stove. That means the, the stand here and the fire ring that goes around the top all fit nicely into the solo stove and then fit into the bag as can be seen here. And just like that, packs up for easy storage. So if you, like me, like the ability to have a portable fireplace around your house that you can fit roughly four to five people around, the Solo Stove Bonfire is probably what you're looking for. I know it haunted me in advertisements for over a year, and then I had a friend who got it and highly recommended it, so I picked one up too, and I have to say, it has not disappointed. If you pick this up for yourself, I know you'll like it too, which is why I can highly recommend it. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. 
If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.